Hi, welcome to Vanita's Kitchen and thank you for joining us. What I'm going to be making for you today is creamed codfish. I'm excited to do this recipe today because this is not only a viewer's request, it's actually the viewer's recipe, a family recipe that they have had quite often. Family originated from St. John's, Newfoundland, and they've been living in the United States. And this recipe has been true to their family every so often they made it so I'm going to make this recipe and I hope I do them well this recipe is another traditional Newfoundland recipe that's made from salted cod if you if you don't know about salt cod or or what they do to make it salted um, I'll share those tidbits on my on my website but it's actually dried cod some put it puts it out on a flank uh, flaked that is a wood and they put it out they dry it some got other ways to dry it and then you pack it down with sea salt and it comes out pretty dry but once it's hydrated again with water soaked several times and right now we got some here that's soaked in water for probably four to six hours the same cod with the salt off then we're going to boil it twice. We're going to boil it in one pot of hot water for two to three minutes, drain that off, and then boil it again. And then after we do that, then I'm going to get going. I'm making this delicious creamed codfish meal. So what you're going to need is a saucepan with water in it, um, and you're going to let it come to a boil. Then you're going to put your codfish in there. And, and after it was soaked for four hours, four to five hours, and some soaks it overnight, but it's not necessarily if you're gonna be home that day. So just put it on in there. And this is about a pound and a half of codfish that we're using here. Put the lid on, then start it up boiling again for two to three minutes, and then we'll take it out and drain the water. So while I'm waiting for my uh, salted cod to have its first boil, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the ingredients. We're going to be using a medium onion that's chopped. Mine's not finely chopped, but you can finely chop it. Um, we're going to be using about two tables, four tablespoons to five of flour. If you can't have flour, you can use cornstarch. About a half a, a teaspoonful of pepper. I'm using white pepper. We're using uh, three and a half to four cups of old milk. I'm using evaporated milk. Um, of course, the cod, salted cod. And we're going to be using Coleman's dried mustard. And this is what um, Chris said that they used on top of this meal. So that's what we will use today. So right now, we'll get back to the cod, drain off that water, and I'll tell you what's next. Okay, so as you can see, my first boil is done on my salt cod. So what I'm going to do now is take it to the sink, drain off this water, and put another uh, bit of hot water onto it, and then we'll start it boiling again. Okay. Okay, so that should be good. So I'm gonna put this back on the damper, and we're gonna let it boil again. Once it comes to a boil, because this is hot water, but it's not boiling water, for another two to three minutes. And then I'm going to take it out, and then I'll show you what we'll do next. Okay, so while we're waiting for the fish to boil on its second boil, I'm going to uh, get my hot uh, skillet ready, and I'm using my cast iron pan, of course, my dad's pan. And I'm going to put... Um, but Chris recipe said to put a stick of butter. So I'm going to say a stick of butter is about one, about two tablespoonfuls. So we'll put that on into the frying pan and start it to fry, or to get it melt down, I should say. Um, if you're wanting to use fat pork, you could use about a tablespoonful or two of fat pork. Get it into the scrunching stage, and when I say scrunchings, is browned off a little small bit and then you can uh, start your roux. But right now, um, we're gonna be using just butter. And we're gonna be putting in our uh, medium chopped onion. So just put your onions on into your frying pan. 
and get this frying till it starts to wilt down and uh, just get nice and soft. I'm just singing along with my onions while I'm waiting for them to fry down nice. What I'm going to be putting in about a half a teaspoonful of uh, white pepper, but you could put in your black pepper if you want to use that. But I just figured because we're going to be using a cream sauce, that'd be good. These onions smell absolutely delicious and the smell of that pepper ooh, is amazing. Now it's coming along nice. I want it for it to be wilted down a little bit more than that before we start our sauce, but it's coming along great. So if you're going to be making this along with me, you just keep on cooking those onions. Okay, so I'm just gonna let that cook for just a couple of more minutes. What we'll do with about a cup and a half of, of milk, we're going to be putting um, the four to five tablespoonfuls of flour into this uh, milk and then I'm going to shake it, make a, a bit of a roux so as we could um, put it into this pot after. But I figured while we're waiting for everything, we might as well get things moving. So i got to go grab a spoon to put this in with me. So I'm just adding the flour into this milk. And uh, this is the way um, that Chris, Chris's recipe said to do. And you just mix it together until it becomes a paste, which is also called a roux. Um, and what we're going to do now is take the remainder of, we leave this for now, take the remainder of milk, probably two and a half, three cups, and pour into our saucepan. Okay, so I'm just going to mix all of this in here. Now normally when you do a cream sauce, you usually add in a little bit of nutmeg, but I'm going to let you use your discretion there. Um, in this recipe, Chris don't have it in there, so I'm not going to use it. Um, it's just going to be exactly how the recipe is written. And uh, so I'm going to let this start to simmer, and then we'll add in this remainder of flour and milk. Okay, just continue shaking the milk and the flour because I don't want no lumps. Anytime you're using flour into anything, you want to make sure those lumps are uh, beaten out of there. I, I always use a mason jar for that reason. I'm going to go now and get my fish and I'm going to bring it over here. We'll flake it apart and then we'll put it into this pot. When it starts to simmer, then we'll add in this paste there, this roux. So I'm going to go now and get my fish. Okay, so I'm just going to put that there. And uh, what I'll do now is I'll take the lid off, put the fish into the plate, and then we're going to flake it apart. It's probably going to fall apart anyway, but I'll show you what I mean by flaking the fish apart. Okay, so I'm going to reach for my fish and take it out of this pot. And as you can see, it's nice and cooked. You can tell that it's flaking apart already. You don't even really have to do a whole lot with it. But we do have to take it away from the skin, make sure there's no bones there. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so basically all I'm doing here is taking a fork and a knife and breaking the fish apart. Now, um, usually when they uh, salt cod like this, there is a big bone right in the middle. Seldom do you get them having that taken out. Um, so you want to make sure that's removed and this is one part of it. I mean to toss it there and you want to make sure there's no bones into this because anytime you're serving any type of fish bone free is important so just keep shredding it apart like this making sure there's no uh, none of this skin or the bones. So I'll do it with the second lot. There's a big bone right here. I'm going to take this out. As you can see, I'll just continue doing that and I'll tell you what's next. So this is pretty much all you would do is take um, the codfish away from the bone and what we call silver skin. You want to get that taken off there as well. This is delicious, I don't like this. It's my fa father and my favorite 
way of eating codfish. Salted codfish, do fish cakes, fish and brews, fisherman's brews. But this meal for creamed codfish is equally delicious because this cod that's already salted and all of those flavors there, going into this cream sauce, I'm drooling here now thinking of it. So all I'm gonna do is finish flaking this fish and then we're gonna put it into the pot and let it continue cooking with the cream sauce. Okay, I'm just about finished uh, finish taking uh, the fish off the bones here, but I'm laughing to myself because if my dad was here now, he'd say, what are you doing leaving all that fish on those bones? Because he would have this where you wouldn't even see anything. It'll be all taken apart, but I'm not gonna get into that. Now you guys could do it. If you had your own salt cod, certainly don't waste a taste of it. What you can do as well, if you're not certain that this is uh, fresh enough after all this boiling salt, like, because that's the reason why you would soak it first and then after put it into two balls of hot water, is to take the salt off and just leave a little taste on there just to flavor that meal. You can always take a small amount like this and taste it. You say to yourself, hmm. This is perfect. I don't need to take any more off. I don't need to add anything in there. And that's how you would know if it's salty enough or fresh enough before you go to the next step. So what I'm going to do now, actually that was amazing, just to let you know. What I'm going to do now is take all of this flaked salt cod and put it into my cream sauce. So this is pretty much what it looks like and again make sure you've taken all the bones out and if you're serving it to anyone that's not used to having salt fish um, remind them that is a possibility that it could be a little bone there and you gotta be careful. So pretty much what we're doing now is bringing this up to a boil again or a simmering not a boil because you don't want to curdle your milk. And then I'm gonna add in the flour and the extra cup and a half of milk that I add there in the mason jar. So pretty much now what I'm going to do is take the, the milk and the flour that we mix together and pour in here with our uh, fish now, our salted fish that's flaked into flakes and our fried onions and to make a nice sauce. Okay, so pretty much all you're doing now is pouring in all of that cream and it's evaporated milk that I'm using. You could use whole milk or a milk of choice because everybody varies. Um, Chris got on his recipe, old milk, and here in Newfoundland, we love using evaporated milk because that's traditionally how they cooked years ago. So we're going to let this now come to a nice sauce of cream, even a little more creamier than that because that got a little bit of a runningness to it. I'm going to reach now for some potatoes that I pre-boiled because this is going to go over a bed of potatoes. Okay, this recipe is coming along amazing. I can't thank Chris and his family enough for reaching out to us here at Bonita's Kitchen and asking to do this recipe because again, we often say, if you can find a recipe, we will do it. Certainly we, we're all about traditional and non-traditional Newfoundland recipes, but we will try other recipes as well. But if you want us to do one that's it's your family recipe, provide the recipe for us so that we got that to follow because sometimes it's difficult to know exactly how your family did that you know but uh, so right now it's we a nice try our best. we try our best we do absolutely this is a beautiful cream sauce chris said you can add some more milk if you want to i also got some vegetable stock here from boiling my potatoes you can put a little bit in there if you think it's um, too creamy and you want to thin it out just that little more you can add some vegetable stock or again some more um, milk or cream so what I'm going to do now because this is cooked perfectly 
You can add a little grate of nutmeg on there because as you know, anytime you use a cream sauce, you can put nutmeg on. I'm not gonna touch it because the secret ingredient in this one, according to Chris's recipe, is the Coleman's dried mustard. And that's what we're gonna flake over this. So what I'm going to do now is reach for my potato and I'm going to take off, I, I put on only four. This recipe is for two to four, two to four people, um, depending on how much you want. Right now, I'm going to just show you what it's like as a serving. So just come in and have a little look. Now comes the big reveal. I'm gonna slide my plate over a little bit more. I'm going to take a really nice helping of the, the salted cod with a cream sauce and fried onions poured over the potatoes and this is called creamed codfish now i mean i can load this right up here now and i don't want to overload it but also chris said you put a little bit of butter on top and then you top it with a small amount of the coleman's dry mustard and this is what you're looking at. Absolutely delicious. Good as it gets. Good as it gets, for sure. So now it comes my turn to have a taste of this delicious cream codfish meal. Absolutely delicious. Like I said, these steps that we've done is super easy. And on top of it, the meal itself, not a lot of work. Like you don't have to, you could take your codfish out the morning of and they come home from work and make this delicious meal. So I got some of the cod, some of the potato and onions. Mm. The perfect amount of salt still left in it because you do want a little bit of that taste in there. With the potato and that cream sauce, Chris, this is a delicious meal. So if you're watching here today, I hope we've done you justice. It's two thumbs up by Bonita's Kitchen. Delicious. We can't wait to get into this meal. So if you enjoyed this episode today of Bonita's Kitchen for creamed codfish and you'd like to see more traditional and non-traditional Newfoundland recipes, viewers requests, Bonita's Choice, anything that we can bring to you on Bonita's Kitchen, we are going to make it. So if you do like it, please subscribe. Go to my YouTube channel, hit the link, it'll prompt you to what you need to do. And each time we post a new video, you will get a notification letting you know. You can also visit our website and that's www.bonnetiskitchen.com, our Facebook page. Either one of those links, you could leave us a message, you can share with your friends and as well request for a video. If we can do it, we will put it on Bonnetis Kitchen. So thank you for joining us once again today for Bonita's Kitchen and from our kitchen to yours, have a wonderful day.